Okay, cell biology fans, we're here today to talk about fermentation. We finished talking about the respiratory transport chain and the process of uh, making ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate using the ATP synthase, which was driven by the proton gradient that existed between the intermembrane space and the matrix. But in the absence of oxygen, that entire process comes to a halt. And in the absence of oxygen, some organisms can still make ATP through the process of fermentation. Now, fermentation isn't a very efficient way to make energy, or at least to convert energy from one form to another. Remember, we can't make or create energy based on the first law of thermodynamics. But what does happen in the absence of oxygen? Interestingly, it is often referred to as anaerobic respiration. And that's a little bit of what I call a misnomer, right? It's named something that's not particularly correct. Because what does respiration imply? Respiration implies breathing and the intake of oxygen. So where anaerobic respiration is really the process that occurs in the absence of oxygen. There are anaerobic bacteria and as we discussed a little bit in class you can run at an oxygen debt if you're sprinting. Right? Muscle cells can run out of oxygen and they can continue to make a little bit of ATP for short periods of time. You can sprint for a short period of time. You can't do it forever. So in this case, what happens is there is another way to generate that small amount of ATP. And this is primarily, fermentation occurs primarily in bacteria, yeast, and in your muscle cells. So this schematic diagram shows you, right, that during glycolysis, we've already discussed this, you can generate some ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate, and you can also generate some NADH from NAD+. Remember, in the conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid or pyruvate, this is very little energy we're talking about, right? 2 ATP and 2 NADH is not very much based on the whole molecule of glucose, but this really occurs because you're breaking one bond. You're, you're starting with that 6-carbon glucose, and at the end of glycolysis, you have two pyruvic acids, or pyruvates, which are two 3-carbon molecules. In the presence of oxygen, pyruvate is taken into the mitochondria where it gets converted into acetyl-CoA. And then that, though, that molecule then goes through the citric acid cycle. However, in the absence of oxygen, all right, there are two pathways for fermentation. In bacteria and mammalian cells, they do lactic acid fermentation, making lactate, all right, or lactic acid. And in yeast, okay, we know that we can make ethanol and CO2. Right, ethanol, this is how we make alcohol, so this is called alcohol fermentation. And most of you know yeast because yeast is important in bread, and bread rises because of the formation of carbon dioxide. The bread rises as the CO2 is generated and it bubbles through the bread. You may be asking, well, why do we want to do fermentation? Why is fermentation good? All right. Uh, why fermentation? Well, fermentation works, and what fermentation does is regenerate. NAD plus from the NADH, okay, that was generated. Can't really see NADH in white there, okay. 
So the NADH that was generated during glycolysis, if we use up all the NAD+, plus, glycolysis will also stop. So fermentation is the process of taking NADH and making it back into NAD+, plus, so you can continue the process of glycolysis. That means that we're really going to only be making 2 ATP for every glucose molecule that goes through the process of glycolysis. So fermentation regenerates NAD+. In the process of ethanol fermentation, the pyruvic acid, or pyruvate, don't get confused, okay, they are the same thing, Pyruvate gets converted into two molecules of CO2, so that's two of the carbons, All right? Two molecules of CO2, and here we have two ethanol. They really should probably show you, right? So we're really talking about if you start with two pyruvates, so we have two three carbon molecules. If you get two CO2s, right, so how many total carbons do we have on this side of the equation? If you count, I hope you can all count, there are six carbons. If you lose t two CO2s, so minus two as CO2, what you end up with on this side equals four carbons, and that's found in the two molecules of ethanol. In this process, the CO2 comes out as bubbles. That, those are found in alcohol. Think of champagne. It's very bubbly. Um, and what's really happening is you, this loss of electrons, right? Who's losing electrons? NADH is losing some electrons. And so loss of electrons is oxidation. NADH is being oxidized back to NAD+, and this regenerates the NAD+, that can be used in the process of glycolysis. In lactic acid fermentation, right, this occurs in some bacteria, this is your muscle cells. All of you have experienced this. Okay, lactic acid fermentation, okay, in the absence of oxygen, you go sprint. So you don't sprint in the absence of oxygen, but when you're sprinting, all of a sudden you can't get enough oxygen in. You can continue sprinting till the end of the race or till the bear stops chasing you. And during that process, once again, two pyruvic acids here, get converted into two lactic acids, all right? So we still have two of these. And the NADH, once again, is losing electrons. And this results in the regeneration of NAD+. What is the problem with lactic acid? As that generates in your muscle cells, what happens to your muscles? That's a bad color, right? Blue is not a good color here. Let's do the white. So your muscle cells, they will accumulate. They'll accumulate some lactic acid, and that eventually makes your muscles feel stiff or sore. Best thing you can do is drink a lot of water and continue moving your muscles so that that lactic acid continues to be squeezed out of your muscles and you clear it away through your blood system. Worst thing you can do is be still. I like to bring this up about fast versus slow twitch muscles because, right, why do you care about lactic acid fermentation or ethanol uh, fermentation or how this all works, because what we're talking about ultimately 
is your mitochondria. All right, here's your mitochondria. And when your mitochondria is functioning in the presence of oxygen, you can make tons of ATP. And we know that tons of mitochondria are found in muscle. But different muscles get used in different ways. So there are these fast twitch muscles, which can generate tons of power, but not for sustained periods of time. This is sprinting. Also, things like flying for birds. Those are fast twitch muscles. You can do it for a certain amount of time. Some birds can do it for very long periods of time. But it's very different than slow twitch muscles. Slow twitch muscles are what you can do over long periods of time. And so think of things that you could do for long periods of time. You could stand for long periods of time. Standing is a slow twitch muscle. And this plays a role in the kinds of meat that we eat. Dark meat versus white meat. All right. So if you think of a chicken breast, chicken breast is white meat. Okay, what do you think? Do chickens use their wings very much? Chickens do not use their wings very much. What do chickens do all day long? Chickens stand and walk around and squawk. So they're not using their breast muscles very much. And consequently, these are fast twitch muscles. Okay, White meat usually has fast twitch muscles. But if you think about that chicken standing up all day, all right, it's using its legs, it's using mostly its thighs, all right, and thighs are slow twitch muscles in chickens or turkeys or any kind of poultry that you eat like that. So if you think about what a chicken does, okay, and what do you think about the thigh meat, thigh meat versus breast meat? Well, breast meat, all right, if you don't cook it right, it gets dry, whereas thigh meat is always juicy and moist, always tastes good, okay. Thigh meat tends to have more fat in it, right? Breast meat is not very fatty. And why is this? This is all because of the function of those muscles for the bird. All right, some people say white meat is better for you. Some people say dark meat is better for you. I personally believe that everything is good in moderation. So watch this video. Try to understand what this guy's talking about and understand the biology behind it. The family is gathered around the table. The question rings out. White meat or dark? Your soul struggles with the decision. Should you follow Yoda or Palpatine? The yin or the yang? What to do? Hey, meat eaters of the world. Trace here for D News. Thank you for watching. Meat eaters are full of opinions on rare versus well done, lamb or mutton, light versus dark. There are so many delicious choices. So when you're carving up a bird, does science even care what meat is which or why meat is different colors? It kind of does. I'll use turkey as an example because it's far easier to see the meaty differences. Turkey breasts are made up of fast twitch muscle fibers. They're made for short bursts of energy and they tire quickly. They become the white meat. The legs, on the other hand, are slow twitch muscles. They are used all the time and they can work for long periods. When you're eating meat, you're eating these two different muscle types. The color of meat is determined by the amount of myoglobin the muscle fibers have in them. You've probably heard of hemoglobin. It's a molecule on red blood cells, helps it carry oxygen. Myoglobin is the same molecule. It's also known as muscle hemoglobin. To determine how much myoglobin, you'd have to consider what the muscles of the animal do all day. Slow twitch muscles that are used all the time need lots of oxygen and therefore have lots of myoglobin. Example, cattle and pigs spend a lot of time standing or walking, so their meat is pink or red. A rare steak has a lot of myoglobin up in there. Chickens and turkeys spend a lot of their time standing and almost no time flying around, thus their legs will be filled with slow twitch muscles because they're using them a lot. 
Their breasts and wings, though, kind of weak, fast twitch muscles, less myoglobin, and therefore lighter in color. Ducks fly and swim all the time, so duck breasts and wings and legs, they are all slow twitch, all dark meat muscles. Speaking of swimming, fish meat would be considered darker around the tail or the fins because those move the most. Ocean fish like tuna, they swim all the time, so they're darker overall than like a catfish which slinks around slowly. Humans have a mix of the two depending on if they're say sprinters, which would be fast twitch, or distance runners, which would be slow twitch. I don't know why that would be helpful unless you got really hungry. When you cook a fast twitch muscle, its myoglobin changes color depending on the temperature. As it undergoes a chemical change, the myoglobin can no longer hold oxygen, and the iron molecules at the center of the protein structure lose an electron. That chemical change forms a hemochrome molecule. That's where the brown and medium cooked meat comes from. Then as the heat rises more, it then becomes metmyoglobin, which is a brownish gray color. White meat doesn't have the myoglobin concentration to color the meat, so it looks more translucent. And as it cooks, the muscle fibers, which are normally bound up in little tight coils, uncoil or denature, as it's called. Also, the water leaks out and the meat becomes an opaque white. Because of the way the muscles are used, they're going to taste different when cooked. White meat is generally thinner, less dense, and more tender, so it can be cooked more quickly. The denser, darker meats take longer to cook, which is why white meat tends to come out more dry at Thanksgiving. It's difficult. But when you fry a meat, the juice is held inside, so fried chicken breasts are still delectable. When it comes to which is better, that's actually kind of up to you. A study in the European Journal of Nutrition said taurine, found in dark poultry meat, could lower coronary heart disease in some women, which is nice. But all in all, white meat is lower in saturated fat. Of course, you have to kind of slather it in gravy because it's dry, so that kind of scraps your benefits. And Dark meat contains a lot of saturated fat, but contains a lot more vitamins as well as iron, zinc, and some other minerals. So I guess you tell us, which do you prefer, white meat or dark? Got a comment section? Go ahead and use it. You can also subscribe to D News, get more videos every day of the week. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, happy holidays. So overall, right, it's about the concentration, right, fast and slow. It's about what they have as far as myoglobin and hemoglobin. And this is all about ATP. In the absence of oxygen, right, fermentation allows for, so in the absence of oxygen, fermentation, regenerates NAD plus and that allows for glycolysis to continue and small amounts of ATP to be generated. When you have oxygen around we do oxidative phosphorylation using the mitochondria and we make tons of ATP. Okay that's your short tortura tour tour oh can't even say that tutorial on fermentation and we'll have another flipped lecture coming soon. Have a great weekend.